Hello everybody, good morning, Anna Sabramowitz here. Hope you're having a fabulous Friday. Oh my gosh, it's Friday, Friday. All right, so today's session, which is gonna be short, punchy, and awesome, is another one of my case studies. Basically, how do you take an interactive story and use it in, you know, in the world? How do you use it as a catalyst for other actions? That's one of the things I wanted to discuss today. And also, um, as I said this week and for the next two weeks, what I'll be doing is reviewing all of the interactive stories that I've used with clients to help them achieve their goals and how you can do the same for your very own context. Because one of the things that really happens um, quite a lot is I get the question, okay, Anna, this is great. I see all these you know, great stories, great interactivity. It's engaging. How do I use it for my audience, right? So what I'm hoping to do is through this um, sharing this information with you and these uh, these contextual examples, you'll be able to get some ideas about how to get this working for you. Okay, so uh, totally right now, just want to make sure that uh, I have am able to see your feedback. So I'm going to bring that up right now. Hopefully that's getting you excited. All right. And if you are visiting from a place that is not here, you better say hi in the comments. And uh, by the way, just before I get started, if you really want to get into uh, seeing more examples and really uh, dig into the framework that makes a great interactive story and the questions you might even ask um, um, somebody who is uh, your target audience to get some good stories out of them, check out elearningsecrets.com. There I have a case study where I basically go through my journey, my process, and how you can use it for yourself, all right? So, and if somebody could put that in the comments for me, elearningsecrets.com, that would be very much appreciated. Now, without further ado, let's talk about this awesome interactive story and its purpose, okay? So first off, let's just go back to first, what is an interactive story, right? very quickly. Oh, I better track this. Here we go. All right. So first off, interactive story, right? An interactive story is a way for you to engage somebody who's cold, unaware, um, who is, um, who is really, um, not sold on stepping outside of their comfort zone and going down the learning journey. They're not even aware that they need it. And basically what your interactive story will do is take them through a journey that another character uh, that they get to act as uh, get, and make decisions on their behalf and help them achieve this goal that this character wants and sell them on, hey, maybe this could be you too, right? That's basically what our interactive story does. And thank you, Christopher. That's awesome. So let's get back to this interactive story. So I was working with an organization and this is what they did. They are huge. I mean, mega, mega, mega huge, right? And what they were doing, and you've probably wearing some of their products right now, but one of the things that they did is they had this really solid uh, new initiative on leadership and they wanted leadership to permeate uh, everything, every single interaction. Uh, they wanted people to be uh, aware that leadership is not something you do in a specific place. Leadership is, you know, they had this, they had um, resources, videos, books, created a whole dedicated area for people to just amp up the leadership skills, right? But they're like, how do we create buzz? How do we get people to, who are, you know, who have been in the business for like 10 years and they're like, I'm already good. I'm an amazing leader. Look at my team. They love me, right? Everybody thinks they're already an amazing leader. So how do you get those people to um, to recognize that they maybe have some gaps, not in a in a kind of like you suck kind of way, because there's other ways to do that, right? But more of a intrinsically driven kind of way, right? How do you do that? And it's funny because I think a lot of people fall into this whenever they start doing a story. One of the things they do is they go, oh, you know, we're just gonna have a story about a new person. And this new person knows nothing and this story, through this story and the coach they're gonna have, they're gonna discover everything. And at the end of the story, they're gonna know everything. And you're like, man, that is so lazy and boring. And I don't wanna see any of those things again, unless you're training people how to do onboarding stuff. Otherwise, uh, if you're new and at the end of your story, you're gonna be less new and more knowledgeable, that's not compelling and that doesn't get me excited. I'm sorry. So you have to craft, if you're gonna craft a new care, somebody who's new to the company and they're learning new things, it's better to 
make sure your target audience is also new, but also that that person is uh, has a whole bunch of awesome character traits and faults that make them likable so that I actually care about their story. Otherwise, it's just, it has no, like me being better at my job is not really the goal I'm going for. Truly, it's not. So, by the way, thanks for being here and paying attention to this. Um, I know you could be doing a million bazillion other things and you're probably distracted by a bazillion other things going on in your life and world. And I appreciate you taking the time to hang out with me and learn about this strategy because it is super awesome and it is gonna make you better at what you do especially if you design e-learning, all right? So this, this interactive story is supposed to target new and existing leaders, like I said. So let's just talk about, uh, and every day that I'm doing this video, I'm going to deconstruct it for you this way, okay? So um, one of the things I want to tackle is what are the things that these people believed? And we, we got this from talking to some leaders, um, also really uh, solid feedback from um, from area area managers, people who were kind of in the leadership positions, all like throughout the company, right? Feedback. So here's some of their beliefs. They believe that leadership only happened at certain times and places. They're like, okay, for time for me to be a leader is when we have that one-on-one -on -one meeting, when you come in and that's my role and we're just gonna do that together. I'm gonna be the leader right now and do, you know, give you feedback and, do some leadership activity stuff. So it only happens at certain places, right? Um, and they wanted to change that. They wanted people to see that it's different. It doesn't work like that. That's not the kind of organization they were moving towards. So they, this was a shift in culture, right? Um, this other, this is the other thing. They wanted leadership to permeate every single role. And these people believed that you do leadership if it's attached to your role. It's one of those criteria, like that person's a leader. Therefore we rely on them to be a leader. I can't be a leader cause I'm not, you know, I'm not in that role. That's not my responsibility. And then the other thing is that they believe that leadership is a natural thing. You just, you know, you're a born leader and you're charismatic and outgoing or you have a vision and and therefore you don't need to work on it because you're, it's like, if you were chosen for that role, that means you really were, you know, a leader. It was recognized and that's it, you're done, you're good, you know, you're good. And that's not what they want. They want people to continually push, right? So here's the, the goals of that. So basically, if you think about these are the limiting beliefs, every single one of your situations that you have in your interactive story, right? Every single one of your challenges is going to challenge these beliefs in some way. And that's what's really cool because that's what interactive stories do. They don't teach you how to be a leader. It's impossible to do in 15 minutes. Let's not kid ourselves here. This is not training. This is just for you to say, ah, oh, look at all the stuff that's holding them back from being awesome. Now let's craft some challenges around them being awesome, all right? So the goal of the interactive story, it was to provide people with aha moments around opportunities for being a leader. So uh, we placed the character, the main character, who was already seasoned and thinking that she was a rock star. All of a sudden she got a little bit of a, like a, a snap to reality, like, oh my God, I've been like, you know, holding myself back and my team back because um, I've been waiting for these protocol moments instead of seeing that there, as she's walking around seeing her team, she could provide guidance and leadership and draw leaders while they're, you know, in their everyday environment, not wait for specific, you know, quarterly reviews. So that was pretty cool. They wanted to question the current comfort zone of people. Like, you know, um, are we doing the best we can? Are we having the leadership that we need? Like question those things so we could push our organization and our, our uh, you know, the, the things that we're achieving. Are we, are we too comfortable right now? That's what they wanted to enforce as well. They wanted definitely for this story to have a very practical point, which is at the end, they wanted people to, to be aware that there's all these resources to help them. So they create and also create an excitement and buzz about something, um, about something awesome, about something new, about something exciting, something different, right? So this is a whole orchestrated campaign. And I really talk about this because an interactive story does not live by itself. An interactive story is a catalyst for other things to work, right? So of course, when you're gonna create excitement and buzz, don't just let it fall flat, have resources to drive people too, right? Which is awesome. And I gotta say, uh, I just got word a couple of days ago that this is still one of the top, this interactive story in, in organizations of probably hundreds of thousands of people, this is still the number one or top, top three uh, 
e-learning or interactive um, interactive experience that is checked out on their uh, learning management system. Now that's pretty dope. And that was three years ago that we launched that and it's still numero in the top three, which is so cool, right? But that's the power of story. That's the power of crafting something that has that has lasting um, lasting engagement that resonates with people because it it's not targeting somebody personally, it's letting them discover that there's there's something that they could be looking at or maybe there's gaps or maybe there's opportunities that they didn't realize that were there. And so by getting people to move from a place of unconscious incompetence, which is I'm good, life's good, I don't need anything, to a place where, hey, look at that. There was just some small changes. This character was able to make a difference. I wonder if I could do that. I wonder where there's gaps in my life or in my team or are there leaders that I'm not recognizing on my team that I could be really drawing on and helping them grow? All this kind of stuff, right? So this isn't, when I, when I talk about interactive stories, I get so freaking excited because, because the, one of the things that's amazing, I think, is that this really can be a catalyst for behavior change. And when I'm saying behavior change in this case, if my interactive story, if people go through it, that's a success. If people go through the thing twice, oh my God, I'm excited, right? Imagine adults going through something twice just to see the alternate endings. Curiosity, curiosity is amazing. Getting their attention is amazing. Creating awareness is amazing. And then my the behavior change I'm also looking for is, do they go to the next step? Do they check out the resources I drove them to? That's my, you know, that's what I'm looking for. And if I did that, win, baby. I got it. It's awesome. So that's, I hope that inspires you. I hope that gives you some ideas about how to use this in your own context. Um, keep, if you like this video and you like this kind of content, please like it, please share it. That is so cool. Uh, because, um, you know, then it lets me know that uh, you're enjoying this content and you want more of it. So for the next two weeks, I'll also be doing a lot more, obviously, uh, like I said, I'll be doing a case study every single day. The time varies, you know, it's within an hour or so of now, but I have a, we're running our coaching. Um, I run an interactive storytelling community and uh, we do weekly sessions of live coaching on Mondays and Fridays and the Friday one is coming up super soon. <laughs> so that's why I gotta go. And that's why I ran this session early. Um, but like I said, if you really want to learn more about what I do, maybe you wanna join our community and uh, craft your own interactive story, whether it's for your organization or whether it's a personal piece that you wanna put out there and show people what you can do, then go to elearningsecrets.com and the case study there will show you more details and more examples and more, um, you'll see, it'll be obviously more visual because everything I do right now is with a black marker. <laughs> All right, so have a wonderful rest of the day and I will see you next week. Thank you so much for being here with me, you guys. I really appreciate it. Have a great rest of the day, bye.